But in today's video, you will be able to use a standard webcam connected to an FTC control hub and be able to read and detect which April tag marker it is, as well as how far away it is and what angle it is in relation to your robot. In the top left, we have our ID21, and then we have ID20 actually showing up. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics design for over a decade now and I've mentored FTC teams to win national championships in our region. And today I'm going to step you through real quick what an April tag is, how do you connect it up on your control hub, and then how can you actually create a class that you can reuse across your op modes to be able to read April tags by specific IDs and understand how far away they are, what angles are, and get all of the different information that object provides. So really quick, what exactly is an April tag? An April tag is a visual fiduciary marker. It is one of these guys up at the back up here. Each one has a specific ID for it. And effectively, every single FTC season, you get new April tags that pop up most of the time across the field. And they have a specific height and a specific distance. And because they have a specific height that we know we can figure out and we look at our camera, we know where our camera is in relation to that robot, we can then detect how far away we are from something, how angled we are away from it, as well as what of our uh, sort of distances might be down to centimeter or millimeter accuracy. So coming down to a control hub here, all I simply have done is taken a standard webcam. I'm using a Logitech uh, C920, but you could realistically use any one. I've plugged in the USB 3.0 port here. And then on our configuration file, we have to be able to tap our three dots up here, go to configure robot. We're going to go to our one of our benches here. We're going to go ahead and click scan. Now if I click scan, it's going to scan for USB devices and webcam one should pop up. And I'm just going to keep it a default webcam one. I'm going to save this over. I'll call this one test bench webcam. I'll make sure I press activate. And that's it. You've got it configured. As far as my testing setup goes today, I've got two April tags in the, my cabinet behind me. The bottom one is ID20 and the top one is ID21. So this ID20 is the one that relates to your blue goal for the decode season. And ID21 relates to the, the obelisk in the middle. The things I'm going to show you relate to any season in the FTC, though, provided you're using the most up-to-date SDK. So make sure that you do have the latest SDK because it's going to pull in the correct uh, April tag markers and numbers that you need for the season because it doesn't always stay between the ranges of 18 and 24. So let's hop into Android Studio here so we can start working through this in Java. Now, I will say that a good chunk of this code is not uh, originally written from me. It comes from the external samples underneath this concept April tag section. So if you want to get more in-depth on this, you can take a look through here. A uh, problem with this one is that it, it lends it up in a linear op mode and it runs the entire code inside that class. So it's not able to be used across other op mode sections like auto. So what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you how to use uh, encapsulation, which basically allows you to create your own separate class for your April tag. And that will allow you to use the same methods and the same the same information grabbing tools that we need for this. We're actually going to leave this concept April tag open. And inside my uh, team code, I have a mechanisms package. If you don't have one of those, I highly recommend you click new and then say package. And inside my mechanisms package, I'm going to right click, make a new Java class. We're going to call this one April tag webcam. And we're making a separate class because we want to keep all these methods uh, well encapsulated. It's just good coding practice that nothing else is grabbing these April tags we wouldn't really want them to. So we're going to make four private variables here. We're going to make a private April tag processor called April tag processor. We're going to make a private vision portal called vision portal. And as you're seeing these things kind of autocomplete, effectively what I'm doing is just pressing tab to be able to autocomplete these in Android Studio. Uh, and you'll notice that it automatically is putting my import studios as well. If you're not using Android Studio as an IDE, I highly, highly recommend it. We're going to make a new private list called April Tag Detection. We're going to call this list Detected Tags. And it's going to be equal to a new array list. So that's an awful lot of stuff, but effectively, the April tag is the April tag processor, and that is what does all of our logic for us for understanding what April tags exist. The FTC FDK already has it set up for some specific tags inside of an April tag 36 D11 family, something along those lines. The Vision Portal is again another library 
that the FTC programs have created for you to allow you to open up vision portals inside so you can use uh, visual processors through your webcam. This list here is going to be an April tag detection. And an April tag detection is an object that basically says, hey, we have discovered an April tag and we're going to give you a bunch of information that's associated with it. We'll tell you its X position, its Y position, its Z position related to your camera. We'll tell you how far away it is. We'll tell you what angles it is facing at. We'll tell you what elevation it is. There's a bunch of cool information that this object will return back to us. Uh, and we're going to, because we're going to be reading multiple tags, we're going to create a list of that. And we're also going to create a private telemetry object called telemetry, because we'd like to be able to display some of this information. You may find you don't tend to use this one very frequently in your actual programs, but for now, we're going to run it through it. Next, we, see, we need some way to actually initialize the hardware or to be able to get the hardware that's on our robot inside this class. So we're going to make a new public void method called init. And you may have seen these things familiar if you've followed along some of my program tutorials before. We're going to pass in a hardware map called hardware map. And we're also going to pass in, sorry, telemetry called telemetry, just so that we can write things out to our driver station screen. And we're going to reference that our this.telemetry. So the challenge inside this class is going to be equal to the telemetry object that we pass in. So this telemetry object here relates to the one that we're passing in as an argument. Again, you might not use this all the time, but it will be helpful for you. Next, we're actually going to build our April tag processor. So we're going to say our April tag processor is equal to a new April tag processor. Now, I'm going to come down to select the April tag processor dot builder method because that is what we actually want to pull out because we're going to define a few pieces of information here for this builder. Now, when I run through April tags, I like to have it draw some information for us. So I'm going to say dot set draw tag ID. So we'd like it to be able to show it what the ID is and it's going to draw it onto the screen for us. We're going to say dot set tag draw outline. This is going to be true. And inside this draw tag ID is also going to be true. We're also going to do set draw axes. This is going to draw the X, Y, and Z axes on here. We're going to say that's true as well. I also do dot set draw cube projection. I'm going to set that to true. You don't have to do any of these ones though. I like to do it because it just makes it a little more visual for me, but it's not necessary. And then the one you do have to do is dot set output units. And it expects a distance unit. So I like to do my distance units in centimeters. You could do it inches. It doesn't really matter. Centimeters I find a little easier. And it's also going to exact an angle unit. So I'm going to do an angle unit in degrees rather than radians. And the last thing we need to do is say dot build with a semicolon. And that will actually create our April tag processor. Next up, we need to make that vision portal and make sure our vision portal knows that it's going to be accessing this April tag processor. So I'm going to say vision portal dot builder called builder is going to be equal to a new vision portal dot builder. Put a semicolon into the that, and then we're going to say builder dot set camera. And our camera is going to be that HW, oops, sorry, it's lowercase, HW map dot get and we are going to grab the webcam name dot class the comma and then whatever you call this inside your control hub so i call this one webcam one with a capital i'm going to say builder dot set camera resolution and this is going to be a new size with a 640 by 480 i find this is a really useful size to use for your april tech processor now inside the size here it's going to ask us to build import class and we want to do the import, the size of Android utility. So we'll grab that one in. Oops, it's not an X, it is a comma. And then we're going to add in our processor and say builder dot, oops, I spelled builder wrong, builder dot add processor. And we're going to pass in our April tag processor. Now, the last thing we can do is actually build that. So we're going to say that our vision portal is equal to builder dot build. And that's actually going to create our vision portal. So inside our init method, we have created our April tag processor and we've created the vision portal itself to actually be able to accept those April tags as part of its information.
now it comes time to actually get some of the information that we need from that builder. So our first method is actually going to update our vision portal so we can actually read what our April tags are. So we're going to say public void update. And you've probably seen this before. It's pretty similar to any sort of state machines you may have had before. And we're going to say that detected tags are equal to our April tag processor dot get detections. And then we're going to, after we know how to update that camera, we're going to call that every single loop so it actually updates our vision portal. Then we want to be able to return a list of all of the detections and all the tags that we've actually detected here. So we make this one a public list of April tag detection, and we're going to call this method get detected tags. And then inside this method, we're simply going to return our detected tags list that we used got from up here in that update method. But you might find that it's also useful to get a specific tag by IDs rather than just returning a list of all of our detected tags. You might want to actually be able to get one specific one. So I'm going to make a new public April tag detection. We're going to call this one get tag by specific ID. I'm going to pass in an integer called ID. And then we're going to loop through all of those detected tags until we find one, or hopefully we find one that has that specific ID. So we're going to say for April tag detection, uh, detection inside of our list, oop, detected tags, we're going to say if the detection dot ID is equal to the ID that we pass in here, we're going to return the detection or return that specific April tag that was inside of our list. And if we happen to end that loop and there's nothing out there, we're just going to simply return null. So what this is going to do is it's going to loop through all the detected tags. If the detected tag is not there, it's simply going to return nothing. And lastly, we probably want some way to be able to turn off that vision portal so we don't use a ton of resources if we're not using it anymore. We're going to make a public void called stop. And inside this, we're simply going to check if the vision portal is not equal to null. So we check that there is still an instance of the vision portal running. We're going to say vision portal dot close. And that will close down our vision portal. So if you remember, I said I was going to show you how to do that telemetry properly after. We're going to go ahead and do that now. So let's go back to our April tag webcam and we're going to add a new helper function here. And we're going to add a new helper function called public void. And this one's going to be display detection telemetry. And we're going to pass in a new April tag detection called detected ID. First, we're going to check to make sure we pass in the actual ID. So we're going to say if detected ID is equal to null, we're simply going to return because we don't actually return anything. And then if we actually have one that actually is valid, we're going to add this in. Now, rather than copying and typing in all of this, I'm actually going to go back to this concert April tag, and I'm going to grab this line right here, all this information that's down at the bottom, because I don't feel like typing this today personally. It's an awful lot of information for me to type. I'll go back in my webcam tag, and I will go ahead and paste this in. Instead of detection.metadata, it saved myself some time. I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and I'm going to rename this one to detected ID and it will pull it in for all of my information. We're going to go ahead and uh, throw this into our main class now. So inside of our main team code, I'm going to right click make a new Java class and we're going to call this one April tag webcam example. And we are going to extend the op mode. And as we know, our up mode always needs two methods. It's going to need a public void in it and a public void loop. Now inside this, we need to make a new instance of our class we just made. So we're going to say that our April tag webcam of April tag webcam is going to equal to a new April tag webcam. And inside of our init, we're actually going to initialize all that hardware. So we're going to say that our April tag webcam dot init, which is our init method, and we need to pass in our hardware map, and we also need to pass in our telemetry objects. So with ourselves initialized, the first thing we have to do is update the vision portal, 
So we're going to call apriltypewebcam.update. So I've got update. We're going to check by a specific ID 420. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that an April tag detection of called ID 20 is going to be April equal to our April tag webcam dot get tag by specific ID. And we're going to pass an ID 20. I'm going to call April tag detection dot display detection telemetry of ID 20. So we're going to pass in whether we actually have that specific or not. So let's go ahead and run this over now. And as usual, sometimes I forget to write add autonomous. Don't forget to do this. Okay, so now let's actually take a look at our camera stream. So I'm going to go to select autonomous. I'm going to go to our April tag webcam example. And we're going to go ahead and initialize this. And we want to be able to see a preview of our stream. So we're going to click the meatball menu and tap camera stream. And now we can see as we tap our screen, it'll actually update as we tap. So as I move myself into the webcam, you can see that whenever I tap, it actually updates. So if I tap a whole bunch of times, you can see that it's actually able to update its frames. Reason this only updates one frame every single time you tap is that this takes up a lot of resources to be able to load this. And then we can see on our April tags here, actually, in the top left, we have our ID 21, and then we have ID 20 actually showing up. And you can see those box frames drawn around as well as the axes drawn around. You're welcome to turn those off if you want to, but it is not necessary. So I'll go ahead and close this camera stream down. And if we hit play, as we see, now we get a whole bunch of information that's actually popping up here. So let's actually go ahead and diagnose what some of this information actually means. Uh, this XYZ is going to be in centimeters, the X distance, the Y distance, and the Z distance away from the object. I'm aware this says inches. I just forgot to change that inside of our telemetry. We're going to go ahead and shut this timer off so that we can run this forever. The PRY stands for the pitch the roll and the yaw in degrees away from that specific ID. And then the RBE is your range. So that's the center of your camera to the center of your tag is 176 centimeters away. B is your bearing or your angle of deflection away from that object. And then E is your elevation or how far up you are pasted off that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a tape measure now. And we're going to go ahead and measure our range. We measure from the center of our blue tag out to our ID and I'm currently sitting about 175 centimeters and we are about 176. So with the, so not perfectly accurate, but pretty darn good. If you're looking for more robotics tutorials, you can check them out in my channel down below. Or if you want to support what it is that I do and then get some more exclusive resources, things like CAD and some different code snippets, you can consider joining my community as well. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer those for you. Otherwise, best of luck out there this robotic season.